Hey guys, here's Miss Holland again on Photosynthesis Part 4. This is actually a continuation of Part 3, so we actually left off with the Kelvin cycle here. All right, so key players, CO2, ATP, and ADPH. We're going to go through what's known as carbon fixation. So we're going to fix the carbon into something different. And so in order to actually do that, we're going to be using what's known as Rubisco, which is a type of enzyme. Now, the addition here, I don't want you guys to get all caught up in this. C is 1, so 6 times 1 is 6. You have 5 carbons over here, so 6 times 5 is 30. Now, when you add 6 and 30 together, you end up creating 36 carbons. Now, 36 carbons is too big to be all together, so if I were to break 36 into 12 pieces, that would leave me with 12 3 carbons a piece. And this is actually what's known as PGA, which is phosphoglycerate. Now, this is even too much for the actual chloroplast to hold. So we're going to continue our Calvin cycle, and we're going to break this guy apart as well. And so in order to rip him apart and to go through what's known as the reduction period of the Calvin cycle, we're going to throw in our ATP and our NADPH. And so these guys get thrown into here and they get eventually ripped apart back into their original forms of ADP and phosphate and then NADP positive with, with a little hydrogen ion. These guys will um, journey to the actual uh, lumen and then they'll get put back together um, at that point. Now, the two here end up forming what's known as 2p gal or what some scientists and teachers call it is the g3p it's actually the same molecule okay so it's either one is fine now this other 10 is going to actually it's a 10 three carbon molecule so we're left with 30 now okay and it's actually going to get regenerated and so this is your process in order to link you back into forming that original enzyme. And so in order to actually do that, we're going to need a couple more ATP to come in here and then the break apart. And then now we have the entire recycling period. So this is your recycling of the Calvin cycle back into Rubisco, which can continue the cycle through. Now let's go and talk about our two P, P gals. If you only have two P gals, which are a three carbon molecule, we're gonna to need to go through this cycle a couple times in order to create six carbon molecule. And that six carbon molecule would be C6H12O6. And so this G3P eventually will produce what's known as your glucose. Now, for those of you that would like some extra names um, to all of this, your Rubisco is actually known as ribulose biphosphate, so it actually has two little phosphates here on the end that are connected to him. Um, your PGAL over here, your G3P, is actually known as your glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. And so in turn, this entire process is a cycle that will continue taking carbon, your ATP, and ADPH and making the product, which is your one glucose. Now remember from this diagram we keep going back to, this is what we just talked about, our Calvin cycle. We just pushed out what's known as glucose. That in turn is going to stay inside the cell. So it's now out of the actual chloroplast itself, but it's still remaining inside the cytoplasm. If we keep it in the cytoplasm, we're going to be heading into fermentation if there's no oxygen. And if we do have oxygen that we just produced from the light cycle, we can actually head into the mitochondria and that the end product is going to be our 36 ATP. All right, so what are we going to do with all this 36 ATP? Well, let's look at it on a global scale. Land plants versus ocean plants, because our, our earth is dominated primarily with the ocean, produces about 90% of the oxygen and sugar that we actually use as a food source or as air. Now again, feel free to go ahead and stop this video at any time to write this down, but plants make more sugars in 24 hours than they need. 
Therefore, they stockpile it into their starches. They store it in the chloroplasts, their roots, their tubers, their fruit. And so there's a total of about 160 billion metric tons per year that plants make of carbohydrates. And so there's no other process on the planet that can actually match this output. Lucky for us, this overabundance of sugars and oxygen allow us to have food and air. And so again, plants will give us a food source, they give us oxygen. Most importantly, they actually take in CO2, and so they're actually what's known as a carbon sink. Now, CO2 is actually produced in many different ways. So marine plankton specifically, because they consider 90% of the planet, actually help take in CO2 that's um, used from decomposition, burning of fossil fuels in our cars, the industry, all that pollution and waste from algal culture, all that fun stuff plankton are taking in or the oceans actually taking in. Now, all of this, if we have too much CO2, can lead to very drastic effects. One of them is the greenhouse, another one is global warming, and one of the worst ones that we're finding nowadays is ocean acidification. So if you have too much CO2, that humans and animals are producing that the plants cannot take in, you end up creating high temperatures. Well, high temperatures causes no rain, which is happening right now in California. And so that in turn is what's known as desertification. High temperatures also will melt the glaciers. And so that causes sea levels to rise. If you have high temperatures, you can't make rice because it's a water-based crop. And so therefore you have economic failure and um, actual starvation because no one can actually get food. Now the ocean is also taking in most of this CO2 and so it's actually causing the ocean itself to become acidic. So the shells are literally getting burned by acid and you no longer have your baby shrimp and your clams and your sea urchins and stuff like that. Your corals are starting to die. Um, they're doing studies on fish behavior where little Nemo, the little clownfish, are actually starting to go crazy in their mind mentally and they're not doing their jobs anymore that they're supposed to do. So the whole ecosystem is starting to fail because of this acidity. All right, so now that I've fully freaked you out about all the things that our planet is going through and the death, destruction, and despair that we actually need plants to help us out with, what can we as Tesoro High School students actually do? Well, number one, we can plant trees. So when you actually go to build a um, housing track or a mall or a freeway, plant some trees afterwards to actually help with the taking in of CO2. Um, perhaps buy sustainable products. So a lot of companies will sell sustainable wood or maybe even buy bamboo because you can cut it and it will grow back. Um, sustainable wood companies will actually cut down the trees and then go back and actually plant more. So look at what it is that you're buying. Number three, maybe um, start using native gardens. So instead of using the water, we can actually give this water to the um, plants to help us with taking in more CO2 and giving us back the oxygen. So use native gardens that don't conserve as much water. Um, go vegetarian for a day. So you don't need to actually be making as many cows in the planet um, that are taking up our oxygen and producing a lot of greenhouse gases. Um, also, of course, raise awareness. Um, just simply by listening to this lecture, talk to people about it, tell them what's going on, and um, you know, pass on the information. Number six, maybe make it a career. So actually go off to college, make um, an invention that can actually help solve the problem. Be the change that you want to see in the world. Uh, this is Ms. Holland, and I hope you guys appreciate these lectures online and I will see you in class. Thank you.